Hey friends, my name is Yi and welcome to a new video for IGCC Geography and today we have 1.3 population structure and here's the specification from the website and in this video we have one case study which is a country with a high dependent population and we'll look at the Gambia starting with the first one which is the types of migration here are two key terms that you need to know so there is population structure and population pyramid and they are quite similar but basically population pyramids are is like a bar chart arranged vertically like so that shows the distribution of, the, of a population by age and gender so let's look at this population pyramid right here as you can see it's split by age which is uh, the vertical column right here the different age groups and it's split by gender with male and female and each bar right here like each age gap represents a five-year age group and the shape of this population pyramid can be affected by the stage the country is in for example stage 1 or stage 2, uh, stage two up to stage 5 which is reflected in the demographic transition model from last video or the DTM model let me just write out the DTM DTM the demographic transition model and it's also affect, the shape is also affected by rural to urban migration or for example dependency ratio and mostly young adults move from rural to urban areas therefore in the population pyramid the base like the base right here will be smaller than the top and there could be different shapes of population pyramid for example this could be like a white base but some could be like, like um, this shape like a, where it has a high uh, working population or some could have like a large top and a small base and it all depends on where the st like what stage the country is in. Moving on to the population pyramid and the demographic transition model, and as I mentioned just now, it's related to the DTM or the demographic transition model and the shapes. So let me just read the notes right here, and I'll explain about these um, these shapes. So countries in stage one, right here, stage one, reflect extremely high fertility as they have the white base in their population pyramid. So as you can see, the birth rate is really high. It's the highest out of all stages, and the death rate is also high. This means that there's a lot of birth rates, so more babies are born every year, every time. So therefore, they have a white base, right? And the width of the pyramid decreases as you move up, showing high mortality rate and limited life expectancy. So moving to stage two, where the country gets more developed, it has a lower fertility rate, like the fertility rate decreases. So birth rate decreases, therefore the base is slightly um, smaller, but it's also still big. And there's a decrease in mortality rate and an increase in life expectancy, therefore the death rate decreases. So the top gets wider because more people or like more people live to an older age. Moving to stage three, we, have, we see that there's a much smaller fertility rate or the birth rate decreases drastically. So the base, so the base decreases in width drastically, and the death rate increase. Uh, the death rate decreases as well. Moving to stage four, the countries in stage four has a birth rate almost the same as um, death rate, like right here. So they have quite a uniform width, because birth rate is almost the same as death rate. And moving to stage five, where we can almost see that the birth rate um, is smaller than death rate. So stage 5, the countries in stage 5 has an inverted base reflecting the lowest fertility rate out of all 5 stages. And as you can see here, there's almost like a smaller birth, like a smaller base than the death rate right here. Because it shows that the birth rate is smaller than the death rate. But, but little to no countries are in stage 5, so we can't confirm whether this is the truth or not. But this is what we're expecting. And moving on to dependency ratio, so here's a key term of what dependency ratio means. So the dependency ratio is the ratio of the number of people under 15 and over 64 years to those in the 15 to 64 age group. Because, uh, because what this means is that the dependent population are the people from age 15 and below and age 64 and above because they can't work, so they can't contribute to the economy, so they are depending on the people who are working. And the people who are working are classified as those age 15 to 64 because they work they can work so they contribute to the economy so they are independent 
And so these dependent people depend on the independent people or the working class. And the dependency ratio can be calculated by adding the percentage of population age 0 to 14 and age 65 and over divided by the percentage of population age 15 to 64 and multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. But there are really any questions about dependency ratio in the exam. So this is just something that you need to know or like it's a good thing to know so you can write in your written answer as there's, there's barely any mathematical um, questions for dependency ratio. And this, uh, this dependency ratio is quite an important indication or uh, like um, this key to, of development as the economically actives contribute more to the economy via taxes and working. So, so through dependency ratio, you can see how much people or like the percentage of people in the country working. And then we have the case study, which is a country with a high dependent population and we'll look at the Gambia. So here are some notes of the country. The Gambia is a small country located in West Africa with a young population. And it has a population of 2.6 million in 2021 and is projected to grow to 5.1 million by 2050. And here you can see the births per woman and the mortality rate, infant mortality rate. And the dependency ratio, as you can see here, is 92. Right? So what this means is that for every, um, every, every independent person, so for every working person, let's say this is, um, I'm just right here. Here's a Bob right here, Bob. Here's a working person, right? Bob. Mm -hmm. So for every working person, there are 92 people depending on them. So here's one person, two, pers two people, and so on. There are 92 people depending on one person, Bob, right here. So this is what dependency ratio means. So moving on to why the Gambia has a high population. So 95% of the population in the Gambia are Muslim, and some religious leaders are against the use of contraception. So religious is a big part of why birth rates are high in the Gambia. And number two, big families are viewed as tradition. So basically, in the family, they would tend to have big, uh, like a large family, like lots of children, because the children can help out in the farm. Like so. And moving on, we have the problems the country is facing due to a high dependency ratio. And just to remind you all from the previous slide, the dependency, the dependency ratio is 92, like per, per, per one person, per one person working, or per independent person. So rapid population growth is linked to poverty, as there's a huge pressure on housing or like water and like different resources in the country. And because of like a huge pressure on the housing, this leads to overcrowding and might lead to a lack of sanitation or poor sanitation as a lot of people will squeeze into one single area, which means that there might be like, let's say, um, contamination of water or like lack of basic sanitation. And because of this huge population and high, depend high dependency ratio, the job opportunities are very limited and the wages are low. And the government has also insufficient financial resources for education and health as there are also a shortage of teachers. And lastly, how the country is tackling the issue. The government has introduced a family planning campaign which has been accepted by religious leaders in the country. The, and the government is working with an NGO named Futures to deliver contraceptives and family planning advice or education to educate people in rural areas. So in the previous video, we looked into the China's one child policy and the pro nativist policy in France. So as you can see here, the government is trying to reduce birth rates, right? Therefore, it's an, it's an anti natalist policy, similar to the one in China. So it's called anti natalist uh, natalist policy so we'll break down what the word means so natalist basically this word refers to the birth rate or the births and anti just means like like the opposite like no right so therefore anti-natalist policy basically means a policy that reduces the birth rates and the opposite of this would be the pro-natalist policy that would increase the birth rate but because in this case, the Gambia has a high population and a high dependent population, they want to decrease the birth rates and decrease the population. 
Therefore, they would encourage the anti-natalist policy. And that's it for this video. And that's it for this video for 1.3 for population structure. If you need any more learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.emixeasy.com. And that's it for this video and I'll see you all in the next video. Here's to learning made easy.